Good morning. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is Wednesday, November 9th, and we, uh, for the record, all three commissioners are present, and we will begin with our public statement read by Commissioner Githens. Good morning. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we reaffirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear. And we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you so much. Um, I have um, a motion to change uh, the agenda um, to table item A and to add item F. Uh, item F will be uh, the uh, settlement agreement, uh, approval of the settlement agreement for Sands and Sands. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of um, amending the agenda? Aye. Say aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, take a quick moment and uh, thank everybody who worked at the elections yesterday. I want to thank everybody who voted. Um, and I want to give a big shout out to everybody who ran. Um, some amazing campaigns out there, a lot of hard work, and just getting the word out to our residents is so important. And win or lose, um, I, congratulations to everybody who ran for office, and um, and we're really we're really um, um, grateful of your willingness to do that. So I just wanted to put that out there to begin with. Um, so next we have uh, a department update with Ms. Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, COVID nineteen remains stable across the state at this time. Uh, confirmed cases are trending downwards. Omicron BA5 continues to be the majority of cases. Um, observa observations suggest that BQ1 and BQ1.1 uh, may be more transmissible, but they are not known to currently cause more severe illness. Um, hospitals are continuing to see large number of cases of RSV. Um, there is no real specific treatment at this time and vaccines are in development and they are thinking potentially sometime next year uh, for those to be released. All right, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Githens. Yes, I was hoping you would give the phone number again of where of the clinic where people can go get their vaccines. Uh, sure, absolutely. 812-334-8300. Um, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. I don't either. Thank you again for all your hard work uh, and for your staff as well. Um, all right, is there any other department that has an update to offer? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we will move on to our next agenda item, which is um, public comment. These, uh, this is a time for the public to make commentary on items that are not on the agenda. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Uh, at two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. And um, at that point, you have 30 seconds to complete your statement. The three minute time limit also applies to each of our agenda items. And we will start uh, at the Net Hill room, but if you are on Zoom, please raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Uh, Mr. MG, good morning. Good morning, commissioners, distinguished staff. First, I wanna just echo Commissioner Thomas's comments around campaigns and elections, anybody running for office. I have sincere respect for that, the commitment it takes. It all deserves just a, a, a moment where we just kind of say, Thank you for doing that because elections are vital to making this democracy work. Um, today, uh, I wanna bring, uh, bring briefly about the Monroe Justice Response Committee. I cannot say enough on how important this committee is to the future of our community. The issue affects everyone from Steinsville to Ellettsville. 
not only is it looking forward, but assessing what came before us. I heard on Monday's meeting that this is not the 80s. We need to look at criminal justice in a new light, and I cannot agree more. Also brought up was collaboration at, at the last meeting, um, both in public comment at the city council meeting um, as well. And I want to echo the sentiment that the county does not need to hear uh, from me or another unit of government on how to do this important work. Back seat drivers are not helpful during this excursion. This journey requires real cooperation to deal with the issue that is the criminal justice system. That said, continuing with the word collaboration, it begins with the work of the county government and its department. Communication is essential in how we govern. When in, doubt, when in doubt, connect with your colleagues, whether that is the county council, probation, or the sheriff's department. When I hear certain frustration uttered in public meetings by our elected officials, I cannot help but think maybe the process was the issue. Silos, egos, territorial battles can creep up crippling government and even uh, business organizations. The work of the Justice Response Committee is akin to a therapy session. A successful session requires all parties to be honest, to look at what Monroe County is doing well and where we need improvement. It demands one enter the meeting with a holistic approach that goes beyond your particular cog in the wheel. I stand before you as someone who wants government to work. Even when I may believe this initiative or that initiative is a bridge to nowhere, there's nothing more than I like being wrong on these issues. The chamber leaves in good, efficient, transparent government. The business community wants to help in any way we can and during this process, which brings up a quick plug uh, that I brought up last week, which is our community conversation, which is Tuesday. Commissioner Jones will be on that panel. It'll be at the Elks Lodge starting at 1130. We still have a few seats opening for that, but it'll give the public a real chance to hear where that committee is and where it's sort of moving forward, because it is a vital issue that we do need input from the public to be engaged on. I thank you for your time today, commissioners. Thank you. Is anyone else who wishes to offer public comment for an item not on our agenda? All right, seeing none, we will move on to our next agenda item, please. All right, move approval of the minutes from November 2nd, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments, corrections, edits? I had one that I sent to him. Excellent. Anita, and she took care of it immediately. So, all right. thank you. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes for November second, twenty twenty two, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries three zero. Uh, next item, please. Move approval of claims docket accounts payable, November 9th, twenty twenty two. Second. We have a motion, and we have a second, and we have Ms. Lettler here from the auditor's office. Good morning. Good morning. Accounts payable for November ninth. 2022 is $1,128,166.64. Thank you so much. Comments, questions? Commissioner Githens. I had had a question about a couple of items, but uh, they've been answered, so I appreciate Great. that. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the NatU Hill room. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving uh, claims docket accounts payable November 9th, 2022, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. We've tabled item A, so we will move on to item B, please. Move approval of a memorandum of understanding with the Community Foundation of Bloomington and Monroe County. Fund name, American Rescue Act, fund number 8950, in an amount of $42,696.35. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. I don't know which of you wishes to, you're both pointing at each other. Who will speak about this item? Uh, well, uh, this is a almost ho housekeeping matter. Uh, we have added this to our plan where the county council has appropriated money and uh, really the work has been done. Um, this is a was a program that was to develop to help uh, pre-kindergarten 
children enter uh, kindergarten and ameliorate some of the socialization effects of the COVID-19 uh, emergency. Uh, this is just the uh, MOU with the uh, community foundation so that we can reimburse them for their expenses. Thank you so much. Did you want to add anything, Ms. Birdie? Okay. All right. Um, comments or questions, Commissioner Gissens? I'm really proud of the fact that we were able to respond uh, to the lags that we envision young children having because of COVID. And so I'm really proud of being part of a, a group that would take this on. Yeah. Commissioner Jones? I'm, I'm also very pleased about this. Um, it's a very needed effort. And I'm also very pleased to see that there are people who are still working on the consequences of COVID, even as everyone else is trying to go back to normal. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. I, I do think this is an amazing program and it was great that this was brought to us and appreciate that effort. And um, this has um, probably had a big impact on our community that we don't even know about. So I'm very happy to support this. Let's see if um, there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the MOU with Community Foundation of Bloomington and Monroe County signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, please. Move approval of financial solutions group agreement regarding geo bond and edit bond in an amount not to exceed $50,000. And this is $25,000 for each agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Cockrell. Yes, um, the creation and marketing of uh, our bond instruments are is a task that financial solutions groups has done for, for many years. Uh, this year, we have two different uh, lendings going uh, through. One is the bond anticipation note. Um, for the Fullerton Pike project or the or other justice facility if that one does not work. And the other is a general obligation bond. Uh, these are 25,000 each. And I will say that I expect they're going to have to do a whole lot more work this year in stirring the market to get the rate down than they have in the past. So that these are two agreements. One is for, for each of those lendings. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Giddens? No, thanks. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. And and these are paid basically out of the bond themselves. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Let's see if there's any uh public uh comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving uh, the agreement with Financial Solutions Group regarding geo bond and edit bond signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, please. Move to approve ASI Inc. Service Agreement Amendment Number 1 in an amount that increases the agreement by $360 per month. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Mr. Cockrell. Yes, and this is the first amendment because we just approved the agreement, I believe, earlier this year. Um, historically, we used to have a, a few different agreements with, with ASI to cover all our buildings. Uh, this change is due to the fact that we move our highway personnel out to the highway garage, and therefore there is an increase in cleaning cost uh, for that for that building. Uh, we had it at two hours a week, and we think it was going to take them just over three and a half hours a week to to do the cleaning in that bill. Okay, right. thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? No. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. I don't have any questions either. Uh, let's see if uh, there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the agreement with ASI Inc. Facilities, um, sorry, Facility Service Agreement, uh, Amendment Number 1, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Stein, please. Move approval of Ordinance 2022-46 regarding the Convention Center. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Mr. Cockrell. 
Yes, and, and you should have before you uh, an ordinance uh, 46 that is creating a capital improvement board. Um, this is very similar to the ordinance that we were working on in 2019. There have been a few changes. Clearly, we put some language in the whereas clauses that dealt with the delay due to the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we also put some language in there about the, the possibility of state legislation that would uh, impact the ability to bond. Um, so I think those are a couple of changes. For the most part, I think that uh, is we're still talking about the same makeup where the county would have three appointments, the city would have three appointments to the seven member board and that those six would decide the seventh member. Uh, it still prohibits, you know, county elected officials, county employees, and, and really anybody on a, on a board that would have materially, would, would, we would look, think in all likelihood would have funding towards this project from that board. We wanna make sure that we have clear lanes and separate voices um, throughout the project. Um, we do have in here a deadline of January 1, 2023 for the city to determine whether they're on board with this. This ordinance actually would not take effect until the city has had committed that this is a good idea. And again, this is kind of a, a step in the process if, with uh, trying to keep the, the project moving along and, you know, understanding that there is some kind of urgency, uh, at least our understanding from potential legislation from the state. Um, so that's kind of this in a, maybe a, a bigger background of CIB is a capital improvement board. Uh, it, this would be designed to oversee the property that is the current convention center and the expected expanded areas to the convention center. Um, currently some of those areas are, are in use for other purposes and we understand that you know that'll have to uh, be figured out as well but this is kind of the step if we're going to go down the CIB route we need to form the CIB it again it's not effective until the the, the city of Bloomington um, says hey this is the route we want to go so that's kind of this in a nutshell I know that there's a lot of CIB kind of ideas out there that I haven't covered so if you have any questions about those I'm more than happy to to do my best okay thank you so much comments questions Commissioner Gibbons no I but I do appreciate all the hard work that Mr. Cockrell and others have done on this Commissioner Jones Yes, I'm, I'm pleased to be taking this action and <clears throat> very much hope that the city will feel that it's, I should say the city administration will feel that uh, it would be beneficial to move ahead in this way. Um, we do not want to see the possibility of expanding the convention center disappear but we do want to be able to work cooperatively and collaboratively with the city. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna, I have some comments to offer, but I think um, I'd like to hear public comment first. Um, and it looks like we have uh, County Councilor uh, Peter Iverson on Zoom. If anyone in at U Hill wants to speak, please come to the podium as well to, to speak next. Councilor Iverson. Yes, commissioners, thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right, I'm battling a cold, so I do apologize for the raspiness of the voice. Uh, I, I encourage you to vote for this uh, as the current council liaison to the Convention and Visitors Center Board. Uh, I work very closely with those who are currently operating uh, our convention center, and uh, I have a front row seat to how important this vote is. Uh, we are currently uh, having multiple uh, organizations from around our state and region who want to come to Monroe County. They want to bring their members here to Monroe County. They want to enjoy our restaurants. They want to enjoy our hotels. And uh, we just not, ha we don't have the facilities to facilitate that. So uh, I think today's, uh, what you have before you is a very important step I think, uh, as noted, it does also uh, show that we are serious in moving forward and uh, that it uh, shows that we uh, want to be using uh, the public's uh, tax dollars in a way that is commensurate with growth in our community uh, that impacts everybody. So 
I encourage you to approve this and I thank you for bringing this forward. All right, thank you so much, Councillor Iverson. We appreciate the commentary. Does anybody else have public comment on this item? All right, seeing none, um, I'm just gonna offer a few notes. Um, this plan has emerged out of being at the crossroads of um, um, efforts to negotiate, um, the failure to negotiate. Um, and we really, it really came down to having to select one of three paths. One is um, uh, hand assets um, over to um, the city administration that we've held for decades and stewarded for decades and maintained for decades and are very proud of the work of our predecessors who got this project going and kept it going and have done a great job before us. Um, and we don't have an interest in walking away. So uh, option one is off the table. So then we move on to option two. Option two is creating the capital improvement board. This is something, as Mr. Cockrell noted, we've been discussing for years. COVID interrupted it. Yes, that happens, uh, happened to a lot of things. Um, but here's why a capital improvement board is preferred. There is uh, tort claim protection, which um, is automatically provided, um, that is not provided when you have a 501c3. Uh, the capital improvement board uh, meetings are public. They must follow the open door law. And um, we have seen um, indications that, well, we will, uh, the, from the city administration that they will uh, follow um, the guidance of this and they would have public meetings um, and would advertise the budget publicly. Um, and um, if that's the case, then a CIB seems to be the way to go. Uh, the Capital Improvement Board also helps ensure a diverse uh, leadership group rather than the promise of one. And it ensures that the, the budget is public and it's not the promise of offering a public budget. Um, and the reason we're concerned is because um, as the County Council was considering passing the food and beverage tax 2018, um, there was a memorandum um, sent from the city administration and the city council, which advocated for the food and beverage tax, asked the county council to pass it, and pledged their uh, willingness and their commitment to work collaboratively with the county on this project. And so is, is this recent memo another promise of the same? Can we count on it? Uh, and it's important to note that the Capital Improvement Board um, is a structure that was created by the state legislature specifically for this kind of purpose, and it is used in other counties with um, convention center expansions. Um, if the city chooses to go along and um, pursue a 501c3, um, there's a few things that I think are worth noting. First is there appears to be a um, assumption on the part of the city administration that the um, income innkeepers tax dollars uh, would automatically flow to the city uh, administration side of a convention center. There is a convention center that already exists. And every year the county council makes a decision about how to allocate innkeeper tax funding. So I think assuming the funding is going one way or another um, may not be wise. If the uh, city administration is intent on proceeding on their own with the 501c3, we will, as the county, uh, pledge to the public here um, that we will plan to proceed with building a hotel, uh, developing a hotel, and we'll add space uh, and renovations to the existing convention center. And these things would likely require that we issue a 
revenue bond based on innkeepers tax revenue. Um, and we would, if this happens, we just want to say that we hope and expect that the city would treat the hotel as a um, amenity that serves both centers. Um, sadly, we've learned what collaboration has meant to the city administration. It means hand over your resources, your land, your money, and the city administration will make the decision. And that's not how county government operates. We take our stewardship of taxpayer dollars very seriously and the resources of the taxpayers very seriously. It's clear to us that the city does not trust the county commissioners and has been working to encourage the county council to pretend that a 501c3 is a uh, structure for a separate city convention center is in the best interest of the taxpayers of Monroe County. However, we do trust the city council and we do trust the county council to do the right thing. They will have to make a decision about whether or not the city administration should proceed with a 501c3 structure. What we have for uh, with us today, this ordinance, is the only viable alternative for expanding the convention center. This is because it ensures that the process of managing a public building with taxpayer dollars has the full transparency, public meetings and public accounting tax dollars that a capital improvement board requires. Now, the city administration had made, made its intentions clear in the recent past, saying, we're just gonna go it alone. And um, this is uh, led me personally to think that, well, um, my initial reaction was, well, then let them do that and we'll do our bit and, and work on our side of it. But I remembered that those two things, that the city had pledged to be collaborative um, to county council before the food and beverage tax was passed and went by a vote of 4-3. And I also know that um, transparency is so important to me as a principle of government that um, the right thing to do, I think, is to... Um, approve this today um, for the sake of public transparency. So uh, all of this to make it clear to the public, to the city council members and our county council members um, that the options and the choices between a 501c3 and a capital improvement board are very clear. That's, that's where I'm at and that's why I will support uh, this ordinance. Uh, do my colleagues have anything else they want to add? I, I just want to point out that we are not opposed to expanding the convention center, even though that's been some of the rumor that uh, has been going around at this point. And I want to, I want to debunk that. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Jones? Yes, <clears throat> when I was on the council, I was actually one of the people who voted against the food and beverage tax. It, had, it was not in any way because I didn't support the convention center. I simply didn't think that that was the appropriate funding for it. I still support the convention center. I want to see it improve and be made the best thing we can in Monroe County, um, but we need to be able to work collaboratively. Thank you so much. All right, um, with that, I'm going to um, do a call for a voice vote on ordinance 2022-46 regarding the convention center. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 3 0. Uh, now we have item F, please. Move approval of Sands and Sands settlement agreement. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Mr. Cockrell. Yes, this is in a settlement agreement uh, with Sands and Sands property. This is due to a uh, zoning issue. 
Um, this settlement has been reviewed by our plan department's executive uh, committee and approved it, and they recommend approval. Um, the, I guess the end of the day outcome is this would, the SANS group would be paying $1,500 plus re, plus the court costs for this case. Thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? No. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. I don't either. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of approving um, the uh, agreement uh, uh, with Sands and Sands signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. All right, we don't have any appointments today. Uh, just a reminder that um, Friday is Veterans Day. Thank you veterans um, who have served us in the past and are currently serving us. Um, there is uh, a Veterans Day ceremony planned at the American Legion Post 18 on Friday, November 11th from 10.30 a.m. to noon at 1800 West 3rd Street. Um, and um, the... Uh, Next, uh, blood drive is also on Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 at Ivy Tech in Shreve Hall. Uh, go to redcross.org to sign up. There's also another uh, blood drive coming up in December, Thursday, December 15th, 10 a.m. to 3, and Friday, December 16th, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, just a reminder for everyone that now is a great time to apply to serve on one of our boards or commissions and uh, go to co.monroe.in.us uh, to get more information and to complete the form online. Uh, and a reminder as well that every month uh, we hold open office hours via Zoom for anyone in the community who wishes to uh, make a suggestion or has some commentary to offer us on county government. Um, and those six times a month are listed on the calendar at co.monroe.in.us. Uh, so please join us. Uh, we look forward to the conversation. Um, and uh, just a note, of course, that uh, county government is uh, closed on Friday because of Veterans Day. Uh, anything else you wish to add, Commissioner Githens? No. Oh, well, actually, I want to thank everybody who worked at the polls. Um, that was a huge undertaking. That's a long, long day. Um, I was talking to a friend last night who said, yeah, she was up at 4 a.m. yesterday so that she could be out of one of the uh, far reaches of the county. <laughs> so um, job well done. Yeah, it, it is a lot of work and it's a um, it, it can be a taxing job in some ways and in other ways. Um, it, it um it's the long day that does it too you know it's, it's a 12-hour day plus picking up and setting up plus dropping off the ballots it's it's a long day it's, so it's yeah it's 14 huge, 15 hour day yeah. easily yes. yeah so huge thanks to those folks who do that uh commissioner jones i concur with everything that's been said <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you all right um we do have a noon work session uh, with the uh, uh, with the group, including members of um, the city administration, city council and county council and ourselves. So we're going to come back at noon for our work session. Anything else I missed? All right, uh, we are adjourned. Thanks everybody. <laughs>